let's talk about the third type of bond, which is hydrogen bonds. And these are really special. So the first key idea is that hydrogen bonds are intermolecular interactions. So they occur between molecules. The previous two types of bonds that we talked about, which are covalent and ionic, tend to occur between atoms. Another idea is that hydrogen bonds are when one molecule has a hydrogen with a partial positive charge and the other molecule must have an electronegative atom with a partial negative charge. So how do hydrogen bonds form? They form if one molecule has a hydrogen with a partial positive charge and another molecule has an atom with a partial negative charge. But how do we get a hydrogen with a partial positive charge? Well, the hydrogen in that molecule, I should have written molecule, will have a partial positive charge if it is bonded to an electronegative atom like oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine. And let's think about why this is true. If a hydrogen atom is bonded to a more electronegative atom, then that means that the highly electronegative atom like oxygen or nitrogen is going to pull the hydrogen's atoms away from it. And because of this, the oxygen or the nitrogen is going to become partially negatively charged and the hydrogen is going to have a partial positive charge because its electron was pulled away from it. And how are we going to get an atom with a partial negative charge in the other molecule? Well, we can get an atom with a partial negative charge if the atom is a highly electronegative atom that is going to pull electrons closer to itself because it has a high affinity for electrons. And this can be like an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine that is bonded to a less electronegative atom like hydrogen or carbon. So just to drive home this point, in order for a hydrogen bond to happen, we need a hydrogen with a partial positive charge, and we can get that if a hydrogen is bonded to a highly electronegative atom like oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. And then in the other molecule, we need an atom with a partial negative charge. So this can be like an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine that is bounded to a less electronegative atom. So let's start with an example. Let's say we have this molecule over here with carbon-carbon bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds. And let's say I ask you, can this molecule form hydrogen bonds with water? Now we know the structure of water looks like this. We have an oxygen that is attached to two hydrogens. And because of this, the hydrogens have a partial positive charge because they're less electronegative than the oxygen. So the oxygen is pulling the electrons closer to itself. And we also know that one condition for hydrogen bonds is we need a hydrogen with a partial positive charge. And we get that from this water molecule because water has hydrogens with partial positive charges. So that condition is checked off. But we also need, in this molecule, an atom with a partial negative charge. Only then can a hydrogen bond form. Does this molecule on the left have hydrogen atoms or carbon atoms with partial negative charges?
While taking a look at the CH bond, remember that carbon and hydrogen have the same electronegativity. So they are pulling electrons with the same affinity. Therefore, we are not going to see any polarity because they're forming a nonpolar covalent bond. Neither atom is pulling electrons harder than the other. They both are pulling electrons with the same affinity, so partial charges are not going to form between the CH bond. So we can conclude that this molecule cannot form hydrogen bonds with water because yes, one molecule, which is water, does have a hydrogen with a partial positive charge, but we didn't satisfy the second condition in which we need an atom with a partial negative charge in this molecule here. Let's now take a look at another example. In this example, let's say we have this molecule over here, and let's say I ask you if the molecule can form hydrogen bonds with water. Well, we know that water has an oxygen atom that is more electronegative than the hydrogen atoms. So the oxygen atom is going to pull electrons stronger than the hydrogen atoms. And therefore, oxygen is going to have a partial negative charge and hydrogen atoms are going to exhibit a partial positive charge. Now this molecule here has a carbon covalently bonded to hydrogen and then a carbon double bonded to carbon. Both of these bonds are nonpolar covalent bonds. So this molecule consists of all nonpolar bonds. And as a result, electrons are shared equally among all atoms. So no atoms are pulling electrons stronger because all of them have the same or very similar electronegativity. And because there are no polar covalent bonds, since there is no difference in electronegativity, we are going to see no partial charges. And as a result, this molecule cannot form hydrogen bonds with water because even though water has a partial positive hydrogen, we need another molecule with a partial negative charge. And this molecule does not have any atom with a partial negative charge. So now let's look at a third example. Let's say we have this molecule over here. And suppose I ask you, can this molecule form hydrogen bonds with water? Now recall that our water molecule is going to look like this. And since oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, it's going to pull the electrons closer to itself and partial charges are going to form because they oxygen and hydrogen have polar covalent bonds. Now this molecule here needs to have an atom with a partial negative charge in order for a hydrogen bond to form between the partial negative and partial positive atom. Now a carbon and hydrogen bond is a nonpolar covalent bond because carbon and hydrogen have the same or similar electronegativities. This oxygen atom over here has a full negative charge. So a full negative charge is not what we're looking for. We are looking for a partial negative charge. But this carbon that is double bonded to the oxygen is in a polar covalent bond because the oxygen atom is more electronegative than the carbon atom. So the oxygen atom is going to pull the electrons stronger towards itself than the carbon atom. Therefore, oxygen is going to have a partial negative charge. So in this polar covalent bond between carbon and oxygen, electrons are shared unequally. 
And since this is a polar bond, partial charges are going to form because electrons are closer to the oxygen atom than the carbon atom. So again, oxygen is going to have a partial negative charge and this can hydrogen bond with the hydrogen atom in oxygen that has a partial positive charge. Now let's look at our final example for hydrogen bonds. Say we have the molecule hydrogen bonded to fluorine. And what if I asked you, can this molecule form hydrogen bonds with itself? Well, again, we, we need to remember that hydrogen bonds happen between a molecule with a partial positive hydrogen and a molecule with a partial negative oxygen or nitrogen or fluorine. Now this molecule has a fluorine atom which is more electronegative than the hydrogen atom and therefore electrons are shared unequally. So this is a polar covalent bond. The electrons are going to be pulled closer to the fluorine atom. So the fluorine atom is going to have a partial negative charge and the hydrogen will have a partial positive charge. So let's say we have two hydrogen fluorine molecules. And remember that we need one molecule with a partial positive hydrogen atom and the other molecule must have a partial negative oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atom. So remember that fluorine has a partial negative charge and hydrogen has a partial positive charge in the hydrogen fluorine molecule. So if we take, for example, this molecule, it does have a partial positive hydrogen. So all we need now is another molecule with a partial negative oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. And if we look at the other molecule of hydrogen bonded with fluorine, we do have a partial negative fluorine. So this partial negative fluorine can hydrogen bond with the partial positive hydrogen. And because of this, a hydrogen fluorine molecule can hydrogen bond with itself because it does satisfy both requirements for a hydrogen bond to form. Now the next thing I want us to do is distinguish between hydrophilic and hydrophobic molecules. So hydrophilic versus hydrophobic. Let's define these. So a hydrophilic molecule loves water. And the way I like to remember this is philic means like or love and hydro means water. So a hydrophilic molecule loves water, but a hydrophobic molecule hates water because phobic means hates and hydro means water. Another distinction is that hydrophilic molecules tend to be polar molecules. And so hydrophilic molecules can undergo hydrogen bonding with water. Because remember, they love water. They're polar, so they do form partial charges. Now on the other hand, hydrophobic molecules tend to be nonpolar molecules. So they cannot undergo hydrogen bonding with water. And this is because they are phobic, they hate water. So they try to minimize their interaction with water molecules. So let's go back to our example and determine whether this molecule is hydrophilic or hydrophobic. 
Well, we said that it cannot form hydrogen bonds with water. Because of this, we'll say it's hydrophobic. In example two, this molecule also could not form hydrogen bonds with water because it had nonpolar covalent bonds. So it is hydrophobic. It is going to minimize its interaction with water. Now this example does have a molecule that can form hydrogen bonds with water. So because of this, we are going to say that it's hydrophilic because it does like interacting with water. It can form hydrogen bonds with water. And remember, one of the main reasons why this is true is because these two bonds are polar covalent bonds. So polarity does happen. And this is because of a difference in electronegativity. And finally, in this example, we noted that yes, this molecule can form hydrogen bonds with itself. And this, be this is because this bond over here is a polar covalent bond. So we see partial charges. And since one molecule has a partial positive hydrogen and the other has a partial negative fluorine, the hydrogen bond can form and this molecule is hydrophilic.